Okay, fam. All of these books right up here is what I want to plan on reading for March. And if you're thinking, oh boy, that's a lot, that's not even half of them. I'm still waiting for three more books to come out, but here's what I've got so far. So, in the next clip, you'll see exactly what I plan or try to plan on reading for next month. It is going to be fun, and I didn't get a whole lot read in February, so I guess we're going to make it up in March. So, yes. <laughs> okay, okay, bye! Welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by this title, it is my long March TBR trying to keep the books from falling, but I don't know if that's going to work. Probably not. And like I said at the beginning, am I overdoing it this month? Hell yeah. <laughs> Last month in February, I didn't do as well as I was hoping to do, so in March, we're going to try to step up the A game, and for one of my group book pick, we I don't know what that book is just yet, but until then, I will keep that option open. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the books that I do have, and then the ones that I will get, I will come back and give descriptions on, because... They're not quite out yet, but one I'll get Monday, so I'll do it Monday, and then I'll do a few more on Tuesday of the other ones that I got. So, <laughs> like I said, let's just go ahead and jump into it, because I would like to try to get through at least 25 books in March. You heard that correctly. 25 books, or at least close to it. But, I am going to be talking about the ones that I already have on audio, so I can definitely get through those quicker. So, let's start with those, and I already have the audio, I'm just waiting for it to be March. So, after Saturday night, it is March A game, and book by me just fell. Love that for me. Alright. The one I want to try to get into is The Guinevere Deception by Kristen White. All I really know about this one is that it's based off of King Arthur's time and I kind of like hearing about King Arthur and Camelot and Guinevere and how her and Arthur kind of meet and get into it. So there's that. There was nothing in the world as magical and terrifying as a girl. Hmm. Well, that has me intrigued. I don't know about you guys, but definitely. <laughs> Alright, the next book I want to listen to more on audio is The Star of the Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I really didn't like The Night Circus by her, and I'm sorry, but I do want to listen to The Star of the Sea, hoping I will like it a little bit more than that one. So I will give a little description on what it's about. Far beneath the surface of the earth, upon the shores of the Starless Sea, there is a labyrinth collection of tunnels and rooms filled with stories. The entryways that lead to the sanctuary are often hidden, sometimes on the forest floors, sometimes in private homes, sometimes in plain sight. But those who will seek will find. Their doors have been waiting for them. Zachary Ezra Rollins is searching for his door. Though he does not know it, he follows a silent siren song, an inexpectable certainty that he is meant for another place, 
when he discovers a mysterious book in the stacks of his campus library, he begins to read his interests by tales of lovelorn prisoners, lost cities, and nameless acolytes. Suddenly, a turn of the page brings Zachary to a story from his own childhood, and possibly written in this book that is older than he is. A B, a key, a sword embolized on the book lead Zachary to two people who will change the course of his life. Maribel, a fierce pink haired painter, and Dorian, a handsome barefoot man with shifting alliances. These strangers guide Zachary through marsh parade party dances and whispered backroom stories to the headquarters of a secret society where doorknobs hang from ribbons and finally through a door conjured from paint to place he has always yearned for. A minute twisting at tunnels filled with books, glided ballrooms and wine dark shores, Zachary falls into an intoxicating world soaked in a romance and mystery. But a battle is a ringing over the fates of this place, and though there are those who would willingly sacrifice everything to protect it, there, may, there are just as many intent on its destruction as Zachary, Marybelle, and Dorian venture deeper into the space, into its histories and myths, and searching for answers and one another. A timeless love story unspools, casting spells of pirates, painters, lovers, liars, and ships, and that sail upon the starless sea. Now, if that doesn't sound good after the description, I don't know what will. I've seen people talk a little bit about it over here on BookTube, but I haven't quite seen as many reviews for the Starless Sea, so hoping this will be a favorite of the year. Don't know yet. Don't quote me. But there's the fat one that I'd like to get to. The other one that I do have the audiobook for is the third Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, I'm not going to go into to full detail because by now we all know what Harry Potter is, and this is just book number three that I'm finally getting onto in the series. And the fact that I'm on book three already, hey, I'm just waiting for the audiobook for four and five to come in because those are big beasts. I am not going to physically read them. I'd rather listen to it on audio, so that's what I'm doing this time around. So there's that. Alright, trying to find the other one I have on audio. The other one I have on audio is the second book to the Children of Blood and Bone, and it is Children of Virtue and Vengeance. I don't know too much about this one, and that it's just the second book, and I haven't gotten it to it yet. I did finish the first one. kind of left me a little bit of a cliffhanger and a little confused, so I'm hoping the second one sums it up more, and I want to go into it pretty blind, so... I'm not going to give a synopsis on this one either. I'm sorry. All we really know is that it's book two, and I think it's still following the same cast of characters. Yep, Zeely and uh, Amari. And that's all I really want to know about this one. Find out more, I guess, in my March Rob Bobby. I don't know what that was, but we're going with it. Alright, the next one I have on my audio list is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This, it just sounded good. When people ask what happened to Andy Bell, they'll tell you without hesitation. She was murdered by Celia, S I'm not even sure how to say the name until I hear from the audiobook, but no actually, no might have, no probably, no most likely, he did it, they say. Sal killed Andy, but I'm not so sure. Hmm, did he or didn't he? 
kind of one of those stabby stabby murder murder books kind of like that we're going with that <laughs> all right and then the next one i would like to listen to on audio is ghost of the shadow markets because i definitely need to read this one before i read chain of gold and that's the one i'm getting on monday so excited i want chain of gold in my hand but I have to read Ghosts of the Shadow Market, so we will definitely be doing that. And then, what secrets does the Shadow Market hold? The Shadow Market is a meeting point for fairies, werewolves, warlocks, and vampires. There are downloaders buy and sell magical objects. Make dark bargains and whisper secrets they do not want the Neblin to know. Through two, cent though, two centuries, however, there has been a frequent visitor to the Shadow Market from the City of Bones, the very heart of the Shadow Hunter's world. A silent brother, brother Zachariah, is sworn keeper of the laws <clears throat> and lord of the Nephilim, but once he was a Shadow Hunter called a Gem Carstairs, and his love then and always is the warlock Tessa Gray. And Jem is searching through the shadow markets in many different cities over long years for a relic from his past. Follow Jem and see against the backdrop of the shadow market's dark dealings and festival Anna Lightwood's doomed romance. Matthew Fairchild's greatness, sin, and Tessa Gray as she is plunged into a world war. Valentine Morgenstern buys a soul at the market and a young Jace Whalen's soul finds safe harbor and the market is hidden, a lost heir and a beloved ghost no one can save once you have traded your, away your heart. Not even Brother Zachariah. I'm like, what? I've had this one for a little while, but I haven't read it yet, but this month is definitely going to be the month. I'm hoping. Okay, fam. I think that's it for the audiobooks that I want to listen to. Now, the ones I want to try and physically read, uh, some of them are quite chunkers. I'm going to say that now. I don't know if I'll be able to get it done in March, but here's to hoping. The one I want to try and finish reading is Children of Time, so I can read Children of Ruin. That's the second and final book, I believe, in the series. But it's going back and forth between humans and mankind, and then it switches off to intelligent, uh, creeping little crawling spiders. So that's why, you know, I haven't contentedly continue but I heard the ending's pretty good and that I will like it so I am all for that and then I'm also picked up a really small book but I want to start the Assassin's Apprentice from Robin Hobb I've heard quite a few people talk about this series and it sounds super good young Fitz is the bastard of the son of a noble Prince Chalavery raised in the shadow of a royal court by his father's gruff stableman. He is treated as an outcast by all the royalty except the devious King Shred, who has him secretly tutored in the arts of the assassin. For Fitz's blood runs in magic skill and the darker knowledge of a child raised with the stable hounds and rejected by his family. As a barbarous radiators ravage the coast, Fitz is growing to a manhood. Soon he will face his first dangerous, soul-shattering mission. And though some regard him as a threat to the throne, he may just be the key to the survival of the kingdom that sounds really good it kind of sounds like it'll be maybe a little bit of game of thrones vibes maybe a little bit of throne of class as well 
we shall see but it sounds good and thank you library for having it so this will probably be one of the first ones I try to read because like I said it's not my copy but I will definitely get onto it eventually don't know when but eventually we'll just leave it at that alright and then I am doing a reread of the Red Rising trilogy because I love Red Rising and I want a tattoo from Red Rising again eventually but I am moving on to the second book which is Golden Sun and it's by Pierce Brown all you need to know is that it follows Darrow and into his world who starts off as a red but then he gets turned into a gold and he goes into this game and they like fight until death it's kind of like the Hunger Games but in space that's all I pretty much have to say it's like the Hunger Games in space but it's way way different and way brutal I might be over exaggerating on how brutal it is but Daryl just goes through a lot and in the first book he had just lost his wife and then he's grieving throughout the whole first book of that and oh, my heart by Darrow but he meets some great friends along the way and there's this one friend that also he is a hollower and if you don't know what a hollower is um please read Red Rising please like please please uh, <laughs> Severo is the alpha male to this group called the Hallowers that they made up in the first game of the Red Rising series. So, you have to read it to know what I'm talking about. So, that's all I'm going to tell you. So, if those facts sound good, <laughs> y'all want to read it. Hey. Okay, we're moving on. We're a little hyper, but we're moving on. Alright, this next book that I just blindly showed you, my bad, but I've had it on my shelves forever and there's at least one, two, three, four, five books into the series and I haven't read them yet. Who am I? Anyway, it is called Embrace by Jessica Shiverton. I haven't really heard of anyone talk about it. All I kind of know is that it's like about angels. So, let me tell you. My girl, happy 17th birthday. I wish I could be there with you, but I think if you are reading this, I am not. A big decision lies ahead. You must let your heart guide the way. I love you and please forgive me, mom. Everything is about to change for Violet Eden. Strange dreams are having her with a real injuries and there's a dark tattoo weaving its way up her arms. She may rock at kickboxing, but right now she's not even sure what she's fighting. Lincoln has always been her one anchor in life until he holds up a big, one big lie. Phonix is there to pick up the pieces, but he's all shades of gray. Is there anyone she can trust to tell her the truth? Now, in a way, from just from reading the back, that blurb, <laughs> that blurb, uh, it gives me the Fallen kind of vibes. So, we'll see if we like this one. It sounds promising. Alright, now this is the next book I'm super excited to read. Haven't read it yet, I know. It's gonna happen hopefully in March. But that is A Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. I hope I said that correctly. All I know about this one is that there's these two boys that kind of hate each other. One's royal, one's not. And there might be a male male relationship. I don't know if that's accurate, but what happens when American's first son falls in love with the Prince of Wales? When his mother became a president of the United States, Alex 
Claremont Dias was probably cast as the American equivalent of a young royal. Handsome, charismatic, genius, his image is pure millennial marketing a young marketing gold for the White House. Sorry. There's only one problem. Alex has a beef with an actual prince. Henry across the pond, and when the tabloids get a hold of a photo involving Alex slash Henry, Alcaration and US slash British relations, take a turn for the worse. Heads of the family and state and other handlers devise a plan for a damage control. Stage a truce between the two rebels. What at first begins as a fake Instagramable friendship grows deeper and more dangerous than either Alex or Henry could have imagined. Soon Alex finds himself hurtling into a secret romance with a surprisingly unstuffy Henry that could drill the presidential campaign and upend two nations. It raises the questions, can love save the world after all? Where do we find the courage and the power to be the people who are meant to be? And how can we learn to let our true colors shine through? Sounds really good. And plus, springtime, you know, romance, sort of. <laughs> Alright, so the next one we're going to talk just a little brief about because I've gave synopsis for this one a lot of times. It's just, I haven't quite gotten around to finishing it just yet. And I need to because book two is coming out soon. And they have a picture on Goodreads. Well, not a cover art of it yet, but there's going to be a book three to the series. And that is Gideon the Ninth by Tamerson Mamur. I probably just butchered that, but I would like to read the rest of this so I know how it ends, and yes! Hmm, excuse me. And then I have yet to get to the second book, to Nightshade, and that is Wolfsbane by Andrea Creamer. I did talk about this one in my February TBR, so it's in that video for the description of this, because I'm not going to talk about it again. Just... I haven't gotten around to reading it this month, oopsies, but I definitely plan to next month and there's more days in the month so hopefully I can read all these books, my goodness what am I doing? And same thing with Power of Six, it was in my February TBR, didn't get to it, doesn't technically have an audiobook for it, but I will read it as soon as I can, just you know, no pressure. Alright, and another one, I'm gonna just show the cover because I did talk about it in my spring reading that I would like to do, which is Would You Like to Meet by Rachel Winters, and it sounds really cute and sweet, and it's about a girl named Evie, and it's just kind of trying to bring a rom-com scene together seeing if she can find love like it happens in a movie to prove her point and I hope she does because it sounds really good and I'd like to read it. Alright, I forgot another two audiobooks. <laughs> the other one I have on audiobook is Arch Enemies which is the second book to Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Now I don't know a whole lot about the second one but hopefully it will give us more on Nova and Adrian and all the rest of them. Wow, I saved from where I got it from. Interesting. Alright. Time is running out. Together they can save the world, but they are each other's worst nightmare. Nova's double life is about to get a lot more complicated. As in the Sonia, she is a full-fledged member of the Renegades. A psychic of a powerful and beloved superheroes. As she works with Adrian's patrol unit to protect the weak and maintain 
order in a Gadlung city. As a nightmare, she is an arch, arch, and uh, la, birds, you know, arch, and a group who, or a group of villains who are determined to destroy the renegades. Nova wants revenge against the so-called heroes who once failed her when she needed them the most. But as Nova, her feelings for Adrian are deepening despite the fact that he is the son of her sworn enemies and unbest known to Nova, he has some dangerous secrets of his own. In this second, okay, yeah, that's all we really need to know. It just goes on and on from there. But like I said, it continues on with Noah and Adrian. It sounds like their relationship may or may not grow i kind of hope but uh we will see anyway the next book i want to listen to more of is the glass sword by victoria aviard it is the second book to red queen i read the red queen back at the end of december and i loved it and i just need to know more what happens to mayor and the boy she ran away with that was like the high king prince and some things went down at the end of the first book and it's just like oh my gosh what's gonna happen we don't know but if i am a sword i am a sword made of glass and i feel myself beginning to shatter and this a thrilling sequel to red queen the story of Maribaro continues. Oh, shimmy shimmy yay, shimmy shimmy yay. Um, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Alright, the next book I would really like to try to finish because I've been halfway through it since like May of last year. Oopsies. <laughs> but uh, that is A Malice by John Quinn. And there's a uh, second book coming or a third book coming out to the spin-off series to this world so really need to get on to reading more of them and, and it's out they're really the beginning is really good it's just i've been in and out of other books so that's why this one is taking me super super long but the world is broken corbin wants nothing more to be a warrior under King Burns rule to protect and serve, but that day will come all too soon, and the print and the price he pays will be in blood. <clears throat> Evanson's has sacrificed too much, it seems, but what he wants, the power to rule, will soon be in his grasp, and nothing but nothing will stop him once he has started on his path. Verdes is the newest member of a warband for the High Prince Nathier. He is one of the most skilled swordsmen to come out of his homeland, yet he is always under the shadow of his older brother. Nathier has ideas and a lot of plans. Many of them don't involve his father, the High King Aquilius, nor does he agree with his father's idea to summon his fellow kings to a council. The Banished Lands has a violent past where armies of men and giants clashed in battle, but now giants stir anew. The stones weep blood, and there are sightings of a giant worms. Those who can still read the signs of a threat of a far greater than the ancient wars. For if the Black Sun gains ecstasy, Mankind's hopes and dreams will fall to dust, and it can never be made whole again. And this is the first book to the Faithful in the Fallen series, and like I said, I have all of them, and then the spin-off series, so <laughs> I really need to get a move on. So as you see, that's where I originally left off. I'm so sorry, my friend. Please forgive me. Alright. 
And then we just have three more books left to talk about. I know this video is already super long, and I still have at least a three more books that I want to talk about for when they come out. One's another chunker. A lot of these are chunkers. Well, the majority of the ones I want to read are chunkers, but oh well. The other one I really, 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 really need to read because the third book is coming out. I don't know if it's the third and final book, but I'm hoping. But that is A Life Life by Jay Kristoff. A robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to become to harm. Your body is not your own. A robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Your mind is not your own. A robot must protect its own experience, existence as long as such its protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. Your life is not your own. I don't know why I read it like that, but in my head, that's how I read it, so that's how I'm going to give it to you guys. That sounds really good. I tried reading part of it before, but like I said, I'm always in and out of a lot of books, so I never tend to finish the ones I really want to finish. Need to quit doing that? Will I? Probably not. But oh, I'm hoping. <laughs> Alright, and then, of course, I have a, another J. Kristoff book I'd definitely like to get to in this month because the second book is coming out in May, which is also my birthday month, so, mm, birthday book, eh, not that it'll fall on the day that comes out on my birthday, but that, that's fine, that's fine. But I would like to get to Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and J. Kristoff as well. Meet the squad of your dreams, the alpha, the diplomat, the scientist, the gearhead, the warrior, the pilot, the mysterious girl. And that's all I'm going to give the little details on this one because it has been around for a little while. I'm just always late to the party, of course. Alright, and then if for some reason if I get around to reading all these books and I get the audio for this one, I would definitely also like to listen to Before the Devil Breaks You, which is the third book to The Diviners by Libba Frey, and I don't want to know too much of what happens after the second one because I'm still powering through it first, so I'm not going to read this one. All I'm going to say is that it's the third book to the Diviner series, and I'm obsessed with the Diviners. Alright, that is all the ones I'm going to talk about for right now. I'm going to cut the video off now, and then future me will come in and talk about Crescent City that I want to read, Chain of Gold that I also like to read, and Wicked As You Wish that I would also like to read as well. So I will see you guys again on Tuesday, and then we'll wrap up this March long TBR video. It's going to be super long, and we're going to be here for it. So I will see you guys then. Goodbye. Okay, this is long overdue, but I finally got those other books that I was waiting for, for my TBR for this month. And it's already March, so this is going to be late getting up. Oops, but here we are. So the other book, well, other books that I was waiting for to come out, which is Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. I started a little bit into it, and so far I like the first two pages. I'm super excited. And the end pages is just gorgeous. And then there's a moon on the front of it. Oh, we like that here. And the same end page on the front is also the same on the back. Why do the covers and jackets never want to go back on the book after you take them off? I don't understand things. But here's what we do understand. 
Bound by blood, tempted by desire, unleashed by destiny, Bryce Quillen had the perfect life, working hard all day, partying all night until a demon murdered her closest friends, leaving her barefoot, wounded, and alone. When the accused is behind bars, but the crime starts up again, Bryce finds herself at the heart of the investigation. She'll do whatever it takes to avenge their deaths. Hunt Athelair is a malnutritious fallen angel now enslaved to the archangels. He once attempted to overthrow his brutal skills and incredible strength have been set to one purpose, to assassinate his boss's enemies, no questions asked. But with a demon wreaking havoc in the city, he's offered an irresistible deal. Help Bryce find the murderer and, and his freedom will be within reach. As Bryce and Hunt dig deep into Crescent City's underbelly, they discover a dark power that threatens everything and everyone they hold dear. And they find in each other a blazing passion one that could have set them both free if they'd only let it. And that is Crescent City House of Earth and Blood. And like I said, I've started a little ways into this. And I'm going to do a reading vlog, so that's why I haven't gone too much farther into this. So stick around for that one, because a lot of you said that you would like to see that. So... It'll be coming to you soon, my friends. Very, very soon. Sometime this month soon, depending how long it'll take me to read that. Alright, and then after I finish listening to Ghost of the Shadow Market, which you need to read before you read Chain of Gold, or so I've been told, so we're gonna follow that. And then again, the end page. Oh, so gorgeous. The outside, it's okay, but it's what's on the inside that we like, you know? Alright, Chain of Gold, here we go. An inheritance of shadows, a love in change, an unqueerable foe. Cordelia Carstairs is a shadow hunter. A warrior trained since childhood to battle demons. When her father is accused of a terrible crime, she and her brother travel to London in hopes of preventing the family's ruin. Cordelia's mother wants to marry her off, but Cordelia is determined to be a hero rather than a bride. Soon, Cordelia encounters childhood friends, James and Lucy Herondale and is drawn into their world of glittering ballrooms, secret assassins, and supernatural salons, where vampires and warlocks mingle with mermaids and magicians. All the while, she must hide her secret love for James, who is soon to marry someone else, but Cordelia's new life is blown apart when a shocking series of demons attacks and devastates London. These monsters are nothing like those that shadow hunters have fought before. These demons of walking daylight strike down the unwary with incurable poison and seem impossible to kill. London is immediately coronated. Trapped in the city, Cordelia's friends discover that a dark legacy has gifted them with incredible powers and now forces a brutal choice that will reveal the true cruel price of being a hero. And that is Chain of Gold and it sounds really good. I can't wait to get into it soon this month. Ah! Alright, and then... One other book I was looking forward to getting was A Wicked As You Wish by Ren Sh I'm not going to even try to say the last name, but it's by the author who did the Bone Witch series. I've read the first one and I really enjoyed it. I need to get on to the, the second and the third book, which will happen soon. 
But like I said, this is another one by her. So far I have three, four, five books by her. So, um, I think she's becoming one of my new favorite authors. So throwing that out there now. Alright, Wicked As You Wish. Many years ago, the magical kingdom of Avalon was left dislocated and encased in ice when the evil Snow Queen waged war on the powerful country. Its former citizens are now refugees in a world mostly devoid of magic, which is why the crown prince and his protectors are stuck in Arizona. Prince Alexei, the sole survivor of the Avalon royal family, is now in hiding. In a town so boring, magic doesn't even work here. Few know his secret identity, but his friend Tala is one of them. Tala doesn't mind. She has secrets of her own. Then, the hope for their abandoned homeland reunites when a famous creature of a legend and Avalon's most powerful weapon, the Firebird, appears for the first time in decades. Alex and Talia unite with a ragtag group of new friends to journey back to Avalon for a showdown that will change the world as they know it. And that is Wicked As You Wish. Now it sounds super good. I'm here for the magic time. Just oh, love it. And the cover is just, it's gorgeous. Okay, can we take a moment? Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> and then, because I'm extra, I got two more books from the library, so I guess we're technically reading 26 books instead of 25? No, I got two more. 26. Sorry, 27. I miscounted. Wow. And so far, that would be The Shining by Stephen King. Not going to give too much details about it because there is a movie and it's been around for a while. It's just, I've never really read it, but I watched the movie a while ago, like way back when, like maybe 2018 or so, and really liked it. So I need to listen to more of this on audio, which I've been doing, and so far I really like it. It's like watching the movie, so we like that. And then another thing I got from my library was Keys of Wild by Nicholas Ames. And it sounds really good. So, Glory Never Gets Old. Clay Cooper and his band were once the best of the best. The most feared and re-owned crew of mechanicies. This side of Heart World. Their glory days long past the mercies have grown apart and grown old, fat, drunk, or a combination of three. Then an ex-bandmate turns up at Clay's door with a plea for help. The kind of mission that only the very brave or the very stupid would sign up for. It's time to get the band back together. Now, as that kind of sounds good, it kind of sounds like it might be a little bit of Game of Thrones, which I like. I haven't read most of the book series of Game of Thrones, but I've seen some of the seasons except for eight, so no spoilers. I'll get to it eventually. But anyway, this I'll hopefully try to get to this month as well. I don't know if I'll get to all of these books. I have audio for half of them, so thank God for audio. But anywhere, anywhere, wow. Anyway, that is my March, long March TBR. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in a new one very very soon and if you're new here you know the drill go ahead and hit that subscribe right down there and hit the bell so you can get emailed every time i post a new video which i try to do occasionally anyway i will see you guys in a new video soon so bye bye guys